Well, good morning. It is mid-April 2021, <clears throat> and this is an update to uh, Jim's fish room here in the living room. Uh, plants are doing well as always. It, uh, I love the effect here uh, of having like a tunnel into the unknown with that uh, plant to the right constantly overtaking the tank and I constantly cut it back and I can't throw plants away. Bruce says, no, just throw them away. No, I can't do that. And so I find myself planting more and more in that bush. It's getting to the point where it looks like it did at Disc Madness when I thought to myself, oh, I should buy that whole plant instead of just $10 worth of seven or eight sprigs. And I estimated it would be about $100 and when I asked the guy how much it would be, he came up with the same figure. So I think I have a $100 plant over here to the right. And so with that, uh, I'm very pleased. This is not what I was expecting way back when, when I was co originally complaining about what they did. But that plant just takes over the tank and gives the fish plenty of hiding room, uh, which is what's needed here, because there's a lot of varieties of fish here. As you can see, the Madagascar lace plant is in this corner. There you see some of its leaves. Uh, still on the narrow side. Don't know why that is, but it is. I love that plant. I was over at Hidden Reef just this past week over in Bristol, Pennsylvania, and they have a show tank. Must be, I'm going to guess, a 100-gallon tank. And the tank is filled with Madagascar lace plants that just are huge. It's amazing. It's really amazing. Our guppies are doing great as you can see here. The split tail ones uh, and then they have the other ones, uh, the fan tail ones, especially the ones orange there. Uh, they're all doing very well here. And you can see that split tail right here. I think that's a split tail, yeah. Sword tails are doing well, as you also just saw the male go by. Female was uh, moved recently, she was very pregnant, into what I'm calling the maternity tank. I think that's one of her young ones right next to her there, growing up. There's that split tail guppy I was telling you about. The uh, black mollies are, I'm sorry, finishing the story. I moved her over to the maternity tank and a couple days later we had so many small babies I took her back out. And we'll see that in just a minute. Meanwhile, there's a brick red sword tail. Don't even comment on the neons. I, I've been, I have euthanized several that were covered with that uh, white fungus, but this one I didn't take out yet. Red tail shark, as always, a beautiful fish. The kabamba here has been transplanted from this is the corner tank from the bow tank and while it's there it's not thriving like you're going to see in the office tank uh, it's probably a lighting issue and then we have the Amazon sword plant which uh, is huge and the centerpiece of this tank I'm trying to think what else is new here I don't think we've introduced anything any new fish, certainly it's got more than enough fish in here. You will see uh, zebras and also um, <coughs> pearl gouramis. We have three small pearl gouramis right there to the left. And uh, very colorful fish, but not very big. And they're doing just fine, but they're not growing up to any great size. So I have one big one over in the bow tank and then three of these smaller ones here. Again, maybe in the camera it looks big. It's not. I was telling you last time it's uh, strange the way we go and buy fish and uh, in buying them they look much bigger <laughs> than uh, what they seem to be when we get them home. I love the guppies. They're, I'm not doing anything special. I'm not breeding them for anything, but they're they're doing very well. And the office tank, of course, is filled with them. 
and then I just call them out to here every once in a while and they seem to do just fine here. They don't do as well in the bow tank. Some bigger fish there, but I don't see anybody eating anybody. They just seem to disappear. So what else is new here? Nothing that I can think of. Um, you have that beautiful black molly down here. Remember I was telling you about this male? See the orange on the top fin? And when he shows off to a female, it really looks beautiful. And there's a uh, creamsicle molly right there. Maybe he'll show off to, to him. That's another male. He's got his top fin up, so he's showing off a little bit. Uh, maybe not. I'm very pleased with the females of the guppies. Uh, they uh, have gotten some nice color, and I, I purposely, when I pick out guppies, which I haven't done recently, I haven't bought any guppies in years now, uh, I pick out ones with colorful tails. Uh, the males, that's not a problem, but the females, uh, you've got to be a little bit pickier. And uh, you can see that blonde one there, and there's another one which would be the normal color with that whitish blue tail. And there's two split tails that together, don't they? The black mollies are all over the place right now. A lot of babies are uh, growing up. So this tank looks like it's going through that cycle again where it ends up with a lot of uh, adult black mollies. And uh, over time, go through a cycle and they all, if I go back and look at some of these videos, they just disappear. It's like so gradual, I don't even notice it. And all of a sudden it's like, hey, wait, there's no black mollies left. So anyway, that's the corner tank. And uh, like I say, I'm very pleased with the growth. Uh, you're still doing exactly what I've always done, the CO2, liquid CO2 every day. <clears throat> and that uh, leaf zone uh, once a week when I do a water change. I do about a third of a change each week week and my discipline isn't staying on top of that uh, so it may be every other week but we'll see let's move over now we're looking at the bow tank and uh, things look kind of quiet right now you see those Davidson barbs uh, there's two of them on the left the neons well hidden in the overgrowth here you see some more of those plants. Also, you see some of the kabamba doing better over here. And uh, when it thrives, I tend to move it. And so you'll see in the office tank, there's a nice growth of that. And then just recently, we need plants like a hole in the head. But uh, when we were over at Hidden Reef, my wife spotted uh, these crypts. And so we got three of them. One will be in the uh, maternity tank, as I now call it, instead of the better tank. Uh, but very pretty, three ninety nine dollars a piece, and uh, I, I think I could probably separate out maybe six or eight plants in each one, but for right now, I was letting it, uh, my wife do the gardening, and she has been working on an outside garden, so I uh, haven't done anything special with these except put them in there so that they can thrive. Does anybody recognize the name Shinops? That almost black molly just went off to the left corner I don't know if it come back out or not um, it's looking out from underneath the plants there something I can't see quite what it is but you can tell there's something back in here looking at us yeah. hmm see the fins moving I'm not sure what it is back there uh, I'm quite a distance from the tank with the camera here, so I'm not able to look closely at it without upsetting everything. But anyway, uh, the one thing I really like about a heavily planted tank like this is the fish can disappear on you. And then, uh, as you're watching, all of a sudden they reappear, and it's like a discovery. And so, 
the plants are just an overgrowth here. My wife would redo these. As she did uh, last video you saw, she cut them all back and replanted things. Uh, they're growing up again. What was interesting is once she cut them back, uh, they, the top of half of the tank was empty. All the plants were shorter. And the net result was the fish all stayed down toward the bottom in the plants. They really didn't take advantage of the open water. And I don't know what that's about, but it was interesting to see that. Uh, I'm trying to think. No new fish over here. We did add some fish into the maternity tank, which I'll show you in a minute. The four angelfish continued to do very well. The black one especially is just gorgeous. But you see one of the... I, I don't know that they're considered koi angels or not, but they're, there's a pair of them in here that do very nicely together, and then there's the black one and the gray one, the gray-bluish one. Again, some black mollies in here. They do very well. Swordtails. This is one of our younger male swordtails growing up, the tetras. See an algae eater in the background there? Maybe that's what we're looking at on the other one. Oh, good. There's uh, the rummy nose. We bought uh, about four of them, or maybe it was six. I don't, I'm sure we don't have six left. But again, one of those were very small fish. When we got home, it's like they shrunk half the size of what we thought we were looking at in their tanks. Of course, theirs was a maybe a 10 gallon tank or bigger. Uh, this is a 50 gallon tank, and relative size, they look much smaller, I guess. And of course, uh, a tricolored shark. Two of them in here, along with uh, two red-tailed sharks. A lot of Amazon sword plants in here. And that frilly plant uh, that I like so much. Right now the leaves seem to be sitting low as opposed to standing up high. But it keeps sending out uh, flowers which eventually I cut off. But it's amazing to watch that long stem you see right in the middle there and it goes up to the surface of the water and then finds light and in the back of the tank there's a couple places where it actually comes out of the tank and there was two of those flowers and they both found the same slot in the cover here that they uh, used to get out beyond that. I don't know why they're trying to get out there. It's not like there's more light out there. There's that uh, what I'm calling a blue angelfish. Uh, not looking so good. This is a, a tetra tank. I've got a couple the uh, serpe tetras, we've got the uh, lemon tetras there. Uh, they seem to do well in this tank and yet we've got some tetras in the other tank. But there's that Denison barb. Don't they look beautiful? I'm so proud of them. I, probably the most expensive fish I've bought in a long time. But they are gorgeous and they've really grown up nicely. Uh, nice looking fish and as they get bigger the color gets even stronger. And there's three of them and they hang out together. Right now we just got the two of them here. I don't know where the third one is right now. Oh, there's the third one. Yeah. Okay. They make a great school of fish. Always admired them in uh, some of the show tanks in the various fish stores, but they wanted like twenty dollars a piece for them, and that's 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 beyond what I normally spend for a fish. Just because if a fish ever died, I'd be crying. And uh, fish do have a lifespan, but these three, I got them for like twelve ninety nine, which is more than I usually would spend. But they uh, really were a great investment. They're doing very well now. It's been many months. And look how colorful they are. Aren't they beautiful? Very proud of them. Wow. Not often I can capture them that way. So nothing else of net note in this particular tank that I can think of. Um... Plants uh, do well, and again, it's surprising to me the way they go in cycles. So 
the Kabamba, for example, that was looking at here on the left was very thick and heavy before. Now it's just starting to come back and you'll see it in the office tank doing much better. It's a nice bunch plant. I really like it. And of course we have that other plant that's overcoming the corner tank that I moved over here also. So it, it does very well no matter where I put it. So it was a very worthwhile investment. And there, where is he? Oh, there he goes. One of my favorite types of catfish. They always have that yellow um, barb. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of the name of that cat, kind of catfish. They're, they're more expensive catfish, but they're very pretty and they do very well. So I have no complaints. And uh, I'm waiting to see if we come back out again. But it doesn't look like it. But here's that plant with the frilly leaves that I was telling you about. It does so well. And these angelfish sit and challenge each other all the time. I can't tell if one's dominant over the other or whether uh, uh, at any one point in time one seems to be challenging the other and then it goes back and forth. So we did get rid of that big pleco. Uh, as I told you last time over Hidden Reef, got him a new home. And as a result, the uh, neons have been safer as opposed to being eaten by that pleco. Uh, expensive fish food when they start eating each other like that. There's that catfish now. I know the name of it and I can't think of it right now. Pretty catfish. Very characteristic of those orange or yellow barrels toward the bottom front of the catfish. Isn't that gorgeous? Very active fish, very healthy fish. Really enjoy them, and uh, looks like we're getting some good pictures of him right now. Whoa, he's faster than I am when I'm at this close up. Sorry about that. We should stop doing this. Okay. Let's go visit another tank. All right, this is what I've been calling the maternity tank. As I get a female looks heavy, move her into here. And we've got all sorts of babies in here now from those various visitors. This is a young black molly we've raised. And the bigger one is in the back there. But she hangs around the bottom unless I put some food in there. And then she comes out. And you can see the babies growing up nicely here. I took half of them and put them in the office tank to see if the growth would be faster there versus here. So I'm doing a little comparison there. A lot of sword tail babies as you maybe can see in the front there. There's our pineapple swords. Uh, there's some guppy babies in here. And there's a lot of place for them to hide up in the plants on the top. So I took the divider out of this tank and uh, there's that crypt, the third crypt I was telling you about. I left in the pot and you can see the two black mollies back there. The other one is very heavy. I haven't seen any new babies since I put her in there about two days ago. But uh, you can see some tiny babies there, which are the more recent uh, ones from moving. One of the mothers over here for a little while. They, they were uh, the pineapple swords. These ones are grown up a bit, but the other ones are really tiny, so I don't know if you're going to see them or not here. Okay, we're in the office again. And you can see off in the background my favorite Lionel engine, which is uh, something I got many years ago and very proud of and just on display. Sometimes I bring it out at Christmas time and put it under the Christmas tree. But anyway, back to the fish. Uh, this tank is doing very well. The Black Molly's, uh, you can see the one female right in the front, how heavy she is. And sometimes I've taken her out too. It's not easy to catch a fish in this tank. It's so heavily planted and the fish are very skittish. So as soon as you go after them. And that particular 
female you see, the big one there, okay? She's one of those with the two uh, higher finned mollies that I got. And then you see uh, just in the center there, the electric blue ram. And they do very well in here. There's two of them in here. I don't know if I've got a pair or not. But uh, very pretty fish. Doing very well here. And I just put in some algae tabs. So we're going to bring some fish down toward the bottom there. And uh, there's that. I'm trying to tell you the other tank. Uh, something called Sheenops. And it's not a black molly. If you look at it closely, and I don't know where I got it, but it's got a, a combination of uh, orange and speckled black almost. And I seem to recall Ray called them Sheenops or something. They're not black mollies, but they're a form of a molly. Oh, there's the clown loach. And uh, here he comes. Oh, good. Well, he's going to make an appearance. There's two of them in here, and they're doing very well. I'm afraid to move them out of here because... That's how I lost them in the uh, big tank, the bow tank, uh, to the ick. And I don't want to take a chance again. Here's some young sword tails that are starting to grow out. And they all do very well in this particular tank. There's the father. And you see the guppies here. Uh, this is where I just leave them alone. And uh, when they get overcrowded, as they are right now, for example, there's the, the mother of those babies and the father changed chasing her. And what you're also looking at here is that kabamba I was telling you about. It's doing fairly well here. It's not as thick as it can be, but it's certainly doing what I need to do here in terms of providing some protection uh, for the babies. It was all floating and I just uh, put it down into the gravel uh, just to make it <laughs> something you can see in this tank. Uh, Oh, there's the two of the electric blue rams. One just went in the back there. There you go. There's the other one. One's bigger than the other, and uh, like I say, I, I think just by coloration, I'm guessing, one is the male and one's the female. Oh, they're talking about male and female. The sword tails are doing very well. And we've got a lot of uh, young black mollies here. Now you can see this is an interesting tank. It's only a 30-gallon tank, a uh, 30-gallon hex tank. Uh, but it's got a lot of activity in it. And even the small tank that is, there's a lot of variety in there. Oh, you know what? I forgot to tell you. One thing we did get at Hidden Reef this past week, uh, they had the bronze catfish. Uh, they had really young ones. I'm saying, I'm saying they're half-inch long. And uh, for $1.99, and usually quarries go for like three ninety nine, and I thought, you know what, this is just what I need in that maternity tank uh, to keep the gravel from hiding food that's going to go bad. And so we put five of them in there, and they're very small. They go right along with the babies that are in there, and lo and behold, one didn't make it, but the other four did. And so uh, that was something I meant to mention to you. And also, on the bow tank... We've got a pair of killifish. You didn't see them today. I don't know where they were. But they've been going through mating rituals down on the gravel. Certainly not going to have any eggs hatched there uh, with all the fish that are in there. But uh, those are two things I want to make sure I mentioned today. And, of course, I forgot it until just now. So as you're watching the office tank, I'm mentioning things about the bow tank, the maternity tank. And uh, you can certainly see the variety here. Sometimes it really there's uh, the Christmas... Uh, burn that gives good hiding places for the baby. You can certainly see the colorful tails on some of these female guppies that I was telling you about. Every one of them has got a beautiful coloration on them. And some of them here are really a good size. Like there's one. Look at that tail. Isn't that beautiful? And there's a blonde one. Look at the tail on that. A split tail. And these are all young ones that we've uh, raised here. And I know this is not easy keeping track of this moving camera, but the best I can do with capturing the fish that are here for you so you can see them. So anyway, the blue rams, 
I've had rams before, and they're a very beautiful fish, but they didn't seem to last too long. They're doing well here. I've had them two or three months now, and they're doing very fine. And they seem to challenge each other. I'm not sure if it's a male or female, the bigger one being the male. I don't really know. But uh, we shall see over time. And there's that beautiful male black molly with the high fin I was telling you about. You can see all the guppies and the colorful tails. Uh, so this is an interesting tank here in my office that I uh, totally enjoy as I'm working on other things. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Always a pleasure having the visit. And I do plan to get up to see Bruce's tank uh, before the end of the month. We've all had our vaccination shots, and he's waiting a couple weeks since his last vaccination shot before we get together. We're going to do a fishing trip up there in North Jersey. He's got a couple of stories he's found. And uh, more importantly, bring the camera up and capture his tanks for you. Uh, I've got to believe that a lot has changed since the last time we did this, because it's been, I can't believe it, but it's been a year or more with this pandemic uh, that we haven't been together. So with that, hey... Thanks. Have a great springtime. Hope you're staying safe and healthy, getting your vaccination shots, and enjoying your hobby. Take care.